Cycling brings out the best of each and every country we visit. The world is indeed a wonderful place, and anywhere we happen to be riding our bicycles, we're likely to discover something amazing and well worth it. Whether it is the people you meet, the food, the culture, or the sceneries, by the time our tours are over, we start planning for the next one. If there is one place that to me, more than anywhere else, represents what I most love about bike touring, it has to be the US Pacific Coast. It's the only place I have returned to more than once, a location that without being too remote, never fails to bring out the best of adventure. Besides the awe-inspiring vistas over the Pacific Ocean, there is a steady stream of cyclists that in all seasons ride along the Pacific Highway as if pilgrims visiting a sacred site. Scattered along the way are some of the most wonderful state and national parks with campsites, real jewels in the midst of nature. With less traffic, spring and autumn are the best seasons to appreciate the stunning vistas that are often around the next turn, and never too far. After Oregon, I cross the border into California, where I begin to dive into the first forests of redwoods, the largest and tallest trees on earth, and one of the greatest wonders of nature.
didn't stop me outside of Safeway and just like kept talking about like No, no, no. I found the Lord when I was on my bike tour. A short diversion away from the ocean is Avenue of the Giants, one of the highlights of the entire journey. A 50 km road through Humboldt Redwood State Park. He's got me looking quite beige. Got me deep in the haze. There's no more compassion, no. I have been extremely lucky to ride this stretch of road twice. Each time, I felt blessed to witness such a spectacle. Trees that are a thousand years old and can turn the most insensitive of human beings into a tree hugger. To this day, they're the most incredible thing I've seen. And I'm on the brink of tears. Once reached Leggett, it is time to say goodbye to the trees. The road rises and a twisty descent brings down to the other side, back to the coast and to the ocean. Part of the world, fog is more than a possibility, especially in the early hours of the morning. On a bad day, it might spoil the views a little, but usually is a brief encounter that, if anything, adds to the charm of this magical road.
come from Portland, Oregon. Jesus Christ, you're way up there. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. You know, those little wheels like that, it yeah. looks like it would be a uh, heck of a lot harder. <laughs> After indulging in nature for a couple of weeks, I get to San Francisco, arguably one of the most attractive cities of the US. I make the most of its roller coaster of streets, taking in the sights as I most like it, pedaling on a bicycle. Cycling the Golden Gate Bridge is in itself an experience, and the fluke chance of spending the night in front of it, in Kirby Cove, spot number one, an experience I will always remember. I later learned how it is one of San Francisco's best-kept secrets. Five camping spots in front of the bridge in Marin County that are practically impossible to reserve. Number one is the best of them all. I learned from other campers at night that it had been booked, but in a stroke of luck nobody had turned up. I want to escape from the city traffic, escape to a place where the only sound I can hear is the sound of the waves. Little by 
Pigeon Point is one of the most picturesque lighthouses on the Pacific coast. And to make things even better for a cyclist, in the 60s it was restored and part of it was transformed into a hostel. It offers a welcome break from camping and allows me to witness yet another breathtaking sunset. I get hopelessly lost in Santa Cruz. I hear a not unusual event among cyclists trying to follow this part of the road. Eventually, I make it to Monterey, not too far from Big Sur, maybe the best known section of the entire Pacific Coast Highway. I have seen enough, I'm more than satisfied. When, not far from Carmel, humpback whales are on a feeding frenzy. I catch glimpses of their large tails curving on the surface of the water as they briefly merge while feasting on a meal of sardines.
weather turn for the worse, and fog too becomes a little unfriendly, and turns into a thick moist mist that hides all views. I suppose they're reminding me that one can't get everything, and that for now I've had more than enough. The road continues all the way to Mexico, but time is not on my side, and other cyclists advise me against cycling all the way to Los Angeles, due to the heavy traffic. Of course, it's a ride I would never want to stop and wish it would never end. But for now, I will stop in San Luis Obispo, knowing that a train journey with a Brampton folding bike is never hard. <laughs>